Hey Hardy, where can I get those cool brushes you're always using? Let's do a brush video. I will show you how to get my brush pack entirely for free and I will talk about some tips on what makes a digital brush good or terrible. And I will demo and walk through some of my favorite brushes in this pack and how to get the most out of them. So some cool professional workflow stuff, some really nice painterly effects that you can get. So hang with me for a while, gain some cool free tools and let's talk brushes. And I don't think I've ever asked this in a video before, but if you're enjoying the channel, if you are enjoying these brushes, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. So thanks guys. Okay, so to get these brushes, you will need to join our Discord community. You can do that in the link in the description or you can go to the Digital Painting Studio community page here and just click join for free. That will take you to our Discord server. If you are new to the server, click the start here button and just choose a role. That just tells us a little bit about who you are and what you're here to learn about. After that, the brushes can be found in the freebies channel right here. It's the DPS brush pack ABR file. Once you install that, you should have this folder of brushes that I will be using in this video. So let's check some of these out. The first brush in the pack is good old default round. This is still probably the brush that I use the most. It's nothing very exciting and it's certainly nothing that I made, but it's so versatile. I like that you can change the hardness on the fly just by holding down shift and the bracket keys. Notice how that changes it in increments of 25%. So you can really quickly switch from airbrushing to get soft tones to something a little more harder edged for different textured and layered effects. One thing you may notice that I do a lot is adjust opacity and flow on the fly. And I do that with the number keys on the keyboard shortcuts. So if you look at opacity, as I press one, it's 10% or six is 60%. You can adjust flow in the same way, just hold down shift. So shift one or shift six. So I'll very quickly do like four, 40, 40 for brushes so that I can tap and build up tones. This low flow and opacity and multiple taps is pretty much that that's the basics of how I build up value to have a lot of control. It's like slowly building up tones so that nothing just comes firing out all at once. It lets you build things at your own pace. Everything's really controlled and, and nice. Let's move to some more interesting stuff. Now, I've got a few brushes that are kind of gimmicky, but we'll come back to those. I wanna to get to the stuff that I find really useful. This row of diamond shaped brushes are really awesome. I actually think this is what you're probably gonna find the most useful in this pack. Let's go with this second one, first of all. It's actually, these two are the same, but there's a bit of texture applied to this second one. This is essentially a pencil brush. It makes these nice chisel tipped edges because of the sh tip shape, right? This kind of diamond shape does a nice job sort of feeling like a pencil that you just sharpened or even whittled with a knife a little bit to give that nice chiseled edge. But it has a tiny bit of texture applied too to kind of simulate graphite, give you a little pencil grain. And I think with digital brushes, it's important to give it that little flavor of like paper texture, give it a little tooth so that it feels somewhat traditional but not taking that too far. If you crank those effects up too high, it weirdly seems to have the opposite effect where the brushes look like they are trying too hard to look traditional and it makes them look even faker. So I think this is just the right balance, a little hint of texture, but not too much. And this is my line art brush, guys. This is what I sketch with. This is what I do little linear, bits of accent, so maybe like a gold rim on a piece of clothing or a metal edge on a robot or something that I want to look like it's just got a little bit of grit to it, but mostly is just a, a line. Notice smoothing 
is definitely a big factor with how I use this brush because I often want it to be some really con controlled edge, some very smooth fluid curve and smoothing is definitely one of the one of your best friends for that. So that is really key. So there we go, a, a basic chisel tipped pencil brush with a little bit of texture to give it that paper tooth feel. And that's it. Best brush I ever had for sketching. Next in the pack, um, actually let's come back to this one. This guy is my shape carving brush. The icons all look the same because I actually made all of these from the same original shape. But this one, as you will notice, is flat. It's basically the same diamond shape, but I squashed it. What this does, and actually I'm going to tighten the spacing down even more, is it lets us design with shapes in a really dynamic way. You can cut across for a thin shape, but then if you cut down, it makes a wider shape. This is somehow really huge for making shapes that feel dynamic, that don't just feel samesy and do the same thing over and over again, like a round brush would do. It kind of gives you these unexpected edges. It makes silhouettes just feel a little more unpredictable and natural. And somehow just, uh, it feels a little like a palette knife, I guess. It's kind of that hard edge where you can cut across sharply and then cut down to give it a nice wide mark. Now let's jump back to this one in between, 300 with the same shape. This one is a textured brush. It's got all kinds of dynamics applied so that the texture feels somewhat random. This has all kinds of uses and it's another really versatile brush that will change its behavior a lot just based on how high the flow is. So if we have flow quite low, 10%, and if I press lightly and bump it along, it's actually pretty nice for making foliage, little bits of leaves and weeds, and it's a good way to be sort of impressionistic with foliage. You never want to use one of those brushes that actually looks like it is spraying out individual leaf shapes. Those can be kind of cool, but they are a quick way to give you that overly digital look, that brush that kind of sprays out a thousand leaves. And I find it tends to just make images that look way too visually active. Like you can't possibly process 10,000 leaves on a tree. This is a nicer way to just make it feel like a blob of paint, something that, that just sits there. Let's do a quick foliage painting demo using this. So if I just, make some organic cloudy shapes. And then lock that layer and paint with a higher value. It makes a pretty convincing and very nicely impressionistic tree. without things getting too shape dense and too, too hard to process. There we go. Kind of using something that's textured and painterly, but feels more like blobs of paint and cloudy shapes rather than trying to spray out a million individual leaves. I love this one. It also has the added benefit of if you crank the flow up, Let's try 80%. It makes lines that feel a little more like an ink brush, or it's sort of like more of that chewed away texture. So if I'm doing lines that I want to be very gritty and sort of hairy and ill-defined, this is a good brush for that too. And of course, we can just crank smoothing up if say we wanted to have some really beat up edge on a piece of armor or something like that. This one's really great. And before we move on from foliage, there is another brush I wanna show you for that. And that is these, this sort of square but rounded shape that has 200 on it. This is my marker brush and I really love this one. Here's what it looks like, especially if we crank flow up and really lean on pressure sensitivity. You can kind of scrub in these shapes 
that have this very graphic marker on paper feel that I just find very charming and cool. I use this for foliage too, just because it's a nice way to vary marks a little bit and avoid that feeling that we're just using a, a digital brush that's spraying out leaves. So a really nice one for all kinds of things, but I, I find I'm using this for foliage most often. Sometimes I will take transfer off so that pressure doesn't affect the opacity if I just want to use this as more of a shape design. So for example, if I wanted to pick out more of these little clumps of leaves and really make them feel like marker, I would just turn transfer off. But if I wanted to do more of that tonal stuff and we want brush pressure to affect how dark and how bold those marks are, we just turn it back on. But really nice is a shape defining tool and as a tonal tool. This one also responds to the direction of your stylus. So it, it doesn't just kind of do the same thing over and over again. The direction you push in affects how the brush tip shape ends up reading. Really cool. Let's check out some really cool brushes for creating terrain insanely easily. That's this set right here, but let's go with 900. I love this one. So this is another very flat brush, which gives us that nice effect of making a thin mark if we cut across and a very thick mark if we cut down. And what you can see probably just with that is that this brush lets us create little rolling hills insanely easily. So if we make it seem like a flat surface and then we kind of cut down the hill, it's really just that easy to kind of make these impressions of rolling hills. I love this. You can define an entire canyon or a valley with farmland or whatever with just a few brush strokes, just kind of based on how this one is set up. So cool and it creates so much depth too. If we control the size of the brush, which is set to pressure, we can also do this nice stuff where we, we can have little zigzags that just get bigger and wider and, and suddenly it looks like with one brush stroke we have created a path that is very close to us here but goes you know miles away the farthest down this little road we have created. Just by making the mark bigger and by sort of zigzagging we can create a bunch of depth just with a single brush stroke. I love that. The last brush that I want to demo is actually a smudge tool. And first I'm just painting a very simple three-dimensional-ish looking sphere just to demonstrate this. And I'm just using the standard soft round brush to do this. Because this is actually how I most often work to get painterly effects, is I actually paint very simply, pretty airbrushy, just to define forms and values. And then I will come back with the smudge tool. And it is this one in the pack. It's the last brush in the pack, this little smudge brush. Kind of designed to simulate a fan brush or something. And I keep the strength pretty high on this one, usually 90 plus, unless I'm doing some really soft blending. And this can do all kinds of great things for us. What I mostly use this for is to just mess up these tones that are like too perfect. It's kind of like raking your fingers through them, messing things up a little bit just to make them feel more traditional, more expressive, and just kind of make things overall more interesting and textured. This can also be used in actual textural application. So it's a great way to simulate fur, for example. If I smudge these out on the edges of the brush. It actually looks like this sphere is some kind of furry material now. And if we drag similar marks across the midtone, it really works. This basically gives you the impression of a lot of complexity in texture with just a few brush marks. I use this similarly for human hair. 
Only in a few places though. I never want hair to get too visually active, but around an edge, this is great to kind of smudge a few little wisps of hair and it just keeps things really expressive. So finding that painterly quality, showing that hand of the artist in your work, I think is especially important with a digital artist because that kind of stuff is sort of built into traditional art, but digital artists have to fake it a little bit. We have to find those ways to mess things up, to keep them from getting too perfect. Otherwise they feel all cold and sterile and just not that interesting. This single tool is how I do that just about every time. So painting simply, thinking about values and forms first, and then coming back in and messing things up, making it feel alive and expressive, super cool. So guys, that's basically it. I hope you enjoy the brushes in the pack. There are a few other things in here, like some splatter brushes that I use for masking out chipped paint. Those are just like flecks of ink that I scanned a long time ago. Have fun with those, but they're, they're pretty much just stamps. A digital brush is never something magic that will just instantly add artfulness to your work, but they can be fun. They can make you see things in a slightly different way and shake your workflow a little bit, kind of force you out of your comfort zone. Because remember, if your work isn't changing, it probably isn't growing. Thanks for checking these out, guys. And remember, if you're enjoying the channel and the brushes, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Lots of new stuff dropping soon in the weeks ahead, so I will see you there. In the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.